Rudy is a, uh, he's the greatest mayor in the history of New York, and there's a reason. He's got great courage, and he doesn't care. He wants to do what's right. This is going to be your crowning achievement because you're saving our country. Rudy Giuliani on Friday getting a shout-out from the President of the United States, and he joins us right now once again. Great job, Mr. Mayor. Great to see you. Welcome back to Newsmax. How are you? Thank you, Greg. Very nice to be back with you. First off, uh, the appellate ruling in uh, Pennsylvania did not go your way, but I guess you kind of want it to not go your way because you want to get this thing to the Supreme Court right away? Sure. I mean, what we wanted out of that case was a hearing so we could put our witnesses on. The judge wouldn't give us a hearing. The appellate court wouldn't give us a hearing. But we got our hearing with the state legislature. So, in essence, we accomplished the purpose of that case, and the Supreme Court can now take a look at it. But uh, we wanted to get, finally, after all the censorship that's going on, we wanted to be able to show that we have evidence and we have a lot of it. So we put 10 or 12 witnesses on who observed the fraud. They observed the counting of ballots multiple times, the same ballot being entered in a machine multiple times. They observed the complete isolation of the Republican inspectors for well over 600,000 ballots. And the only reason that was done is so that they could cheat. They didn't want to be observed cheating. Uh, We had witnesses that said that in one part of the state, if you made a mistake on the ballot, you could fix it. Other part of the state, the Republican part, you couldn't. Well, fixing it means committing forgery. (laughs) When you fix a ballot after it's been submitted, there's kind of like forgery involved. Uh, And then you have this very strange situation where there are more ballots that were counted than were sent out by a couple hundred thousand. Now, how did that happen? Well, Mr. Mayor, wait a second. You just said you have have evidence. Mr. Mayor, you just said you have evidence. And I have been hearing from the mainstream media from the get go that there is no evidence and it's all unverified. And you made that point in the press conference last week. You've got affidavits. You've got hundreds of them. You unveiled some of the evidence at that hearing, and they continually say you have no evidence and all of this is unsubstantiated. Even after the hearing with the the witness, uh, three of them are three of them very, very distinguished careers in the military. One of them one of them is a cyber expert who actually can testify to how information was being taken out of the machines. Uh, People. People, lawyers, doctors, I mean, people, very substantial people and very regular people. They have they're not going to put their names on an affidavit under penalty of perjury for for something like this. I mean, the numbers are astounding. They cheated with over 700,000 votes. You know, Mr. Mayor, big, big fraud. It's not little. No, it happened. It happened the same way in six states. So now we're going to move on to Michigan and to Arizona and to Wisconsin and to uh, Nevada and to Atlanta, Georgia, where the same thing happened. When you file a lawsuit, by the way, and sometimes in court proceedings, um, you can have a hunch, you can have suspicion, you can have some evidence, but you bring it to a judge and a judge can say, oh, you've got something here. And then it goes into a phase called discovery, if I'm not mistaken. A judge can. We have never had that. We, We were deprived of that by the judge. The judge just threw us out. He threw us out. He decided the, the claims weren't true. He just Which, threw us out. W- w- I, I, again, when the media say, well, there's no evidence here. I mean, if you get a judge and you will, like it would say, compel the other side to produce evidence. I mean, that can happen. We will get we'll get a judge like that. But right now we can't wait. So we're going directly to the legislatures. Look, the Constitution of the United States puts the selection of the president in the hands of the state legislature. Not the governor, not the attorney general, but the state legislature. They set the rules and they decide if the vote is correct. So we're going to each one of these state legislators and we're saying, if you certify that vote, you're certifying a false statement. You're committing fraud because that vote is not the right vote. Biden did not win the number of votes that he has attributed to him. Some of those votes he won by taking a ballot and putting it in a machine and counting it five times. So he would get five votes for every one that Trump got. And we've got witnesses to that in Pennsylvania, in Michigan, and in Arizona. 
So that's the game they plan. Followed the same, they followed the same fraudulent pat- patterns in the big cities where they control like dictators, where the Democrats have dictatorial control and plenty of corruption. You know, it's wild. They keep accusing uh, your side of waging a coup and everything you're doing is totally legal within bounds. The Electoral College has not convened. These things haven't been sent in yet, which I find ridiculous. So has your strategy shifted, though, to primarily a political one than a legal one? There's not enough time, perhaps, to get relief from the courts. So you're going right to the legislatures, all of them that you just mentioned, and basically trying to persuade them this happened. So electorally, when you guys get together, your electoral vote should not be allocated uh, for Biden. We're doing both with equal with equal speed, enthusiasm and taking advantage of which one gives us the hearing uh, the quickest and which one will work fastest for us, because we don't have a lot of time. We've got a lot of evidence. We don't have a lot of time. And we uh, when we're facing a major censorship so that it's very hard to get this information out to the public. Public has only a small idea of the kind of evidence that we have. You know, the situation in Michigan was worse than the situation in Pennsylvania. Situation in Wisconsin was outrageous. I mean, they have all these all these absentee ballots without applications. Uh, in in Nevada, they used a, a machine that basically didn't work and it let every signature go through, even though it's illegal to use a machine. I mean, they, they cheated in all the all the places that were critical to them. And, you know, they did because Trump was way ahead on the night of the election. It's impossible that Biden would have come back at every single one of those places. Impossible. Especially just, places like, well, you know, the, the, the four cities where he beat Hillary Clinton. Only four cities did he do better than Hillary, which is pretty wild. Uh, Milwaukee, Detroit, Atlanta and Philadelphia happen to be key cities in great big swing states run by Democrats. I think there's some there could be something there, don't you think? Oh, there definitely is. They picked. They pick what you would call home field advantage. Home field advantage means cities that they've been running for 30, 40, 50, 60 years, and they're crooked as heck. I mean, crooked from top to bottom, including some of the judges. Mayor Giuliani, one other thing. You know, you prosecuted a lot of cases. I know you've had um, media watching some of those cases. Sometimes they've been in the courtroom how much can they influence the events that are actually happening right now? Um, can it be overstated? Can it be understated, misunderstood? Because, you know, they're they're selling a narrative that is not in agreement with, with, with what you're putting out there. Can it be neutralized? Does it really matter in the end or is it having an impact? Oh, it definitely has an impact. I mean, for example, they cover the hearing in Philadelphia or rather in Gettysburg and they cover the part where the president calls in. They don't cover the eight witnesses. If that were the other way around, if it were if it were the presentation of witnesses against Donald Trump, every single one of those witnesses would be on for days like they did during the during the Trump phony impeachment hearings. Well, Mayor Giuliani, we covered the whole thing. But I will say this. We started we started the segment with uh, the president's uh, praise of you because we just thought it was a nice moment. But we had the whole thing on TV. Thank you, Greg. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Best to Andrew Giuliani, the family, and uh, our best wishes to the president as well and the entire team. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. You too. All right.